So, change is a part of life, right? And I got some big changes for this rig in store. What you're looking at here is this is the actual rig I use when I uh, go over to my buddy's house on uh, Saturday nights and do the, uh, the Saturday night streams. And uh, what it is, is it's, it's kind of an older rig, but I've got some plans for it. And uh, one of the plans is uh, it's going to get a new processor. Now, this rig is, is based on uh, X58 chipset, so yeah, it's older. And currently, it's got an Asus P6T Deluxe V2 with 12 gigabytes of RAM, an Intel Core i7-940, and a, a GTX 970 4 gig card, uh, video card. What we're going to be changing is the CPU. The CPU I'm going to put into it is this. And there we go. This is the processor. It is an Intel Xeon X5660. It runs at a base frequency of 2.8 gigahertz. has a turbo frequency of 3.2. It has 12 megabytes of, of cache on board. Uh, it uh, supports triple ch channel memory. It is a socket B or socket 1366, you can see from right there. And it is meant for X58 platforms. Um, six cores, 12 threads. That's primarily what I'm after is more cores because the future of this rig, I'm going to try to pull a few more light, a uh, few more years out of it, is to also do some virtualization duty, duty ESX, that kind of thing. This, hence the the upgrade, instead of just uh, going to a new machine. That and this this particular processor cost me 28 bucks from Tech Parts LLC. They're an eBay seller and it had good reviews, so I said I'd give them a try. 28 bucks is kind of a no-brainer to try a upgrade product, a product like this, and if uh, it works out. It's a hell of a cheap upgrade for a heck of a lot more performance. Well, we'll see about that, won't we? Anyway, the only issue we have here is, and you're looking at my CPU ID, reporting on the current board this thing lives in, or will live in, it's an Asus P6T Deluxe V2, and it's BIOS version, which may be the concern, 1108. On eBay, they routinely, they routinely sell this processor and even above with this particular board, without issue. However, they never tell you what the BIOS revision really is. And from my own research, I've seen that some folks report that the 1108 BIOS doesn't work at all, that you have to use the 1202, which was the last BIOS released by Asus for this particular board. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to try to tr pop this thing in and, and determine once and for all if the 1108 BIOS is sufficient to run this processor. We're also going to find out if Tech Parts LLC sells good parts. Because there'll be a way to determine whether it's a dead processor or, a, or just a bad BIOS as we do go along in this little adventure. Anyway, let's get going. All right, time to start the surgery. And yes, in case you're curious, yes, this is a Zalman uh, GS1000 case, so... It's a nice case, but it's a little dated. These nifty little captured screws. This is off here. And boom. Belly of the beast. It's a Thermal Right 120 heat sink and fan. And there you can see the board itself and the 12 gig of RAM, triple channel. Um, old PC power and cooling uh, 750, silencer 750 power supply in here. And there's the GTX 970. What we're going to do is we're going to take this, this heat sink off first. That's where everything starts. So let's get to it. All right, first thing I do is get these screws out. No, not really out, just loosening them. Well, yeah, these are the hold downs for this particular configuration here. I think I've had this 
heat sink off in a few years. Oh, there's one. And another. I'm going back now. I'm real happy with the thermal right heat sinks, more so than anybody else. This is one of their better ones at the time. Let's see if we can just do that. There we go. Comes right off. There you can see. We don't use much in the way of thermal paste here. Just a dab will do you. Okay. stuff off. And of course we're discharged and all that good stuff. See there's the 940 down there. Just pop it up. There you go. Looks good. There's the socket. There's the CPU. Right over here. Let's not waste any time. I always hated the way these went. There's always this little bit of fear. Get it down there. Ah! That is scary as hell, isn't it? Socket's fine. There we go, we're latched in, got that little bit there. I'll do just a little dab, make sure it's clean. We may be redoing this lint free cloth here just to clean it up. I've actually got a little dab of cleaner stuff that I have we got a long time ago. Two. All right, deal is done. I've forgotten what opinion about this thermal I can be to get in there, but we're in there, new processors in there. Now I've changed nothing else. Oh yeah, and the memory, it's Corsair Vengeance, so it's good memory. Anyway, we've got this on. Let's see if this does anything when we power it up. All right guys, now I specifically don't want this machine to boot into anything. I want it to go straight to the BIOS, so I'm pulling out my drive. So that's done, but let's see if anything happens. Watch the screen. Well, we got a BIOS screen. see what we got. It's picking it up. Look at that. Well, it looks like BIOS 1108 is compatible with this processor. So we've changed nothing. Take a look again. You even have to change the DRAM timing. Okay, it's running at 2.8. Let's look at the hardware monitoring. Let's see. We 
get anything out of that. All right. Point oh one volts. All right. So so far so good. We put it into Windows 7. Well, that's a good sign. It found 12 threads. And it wants you to restart. Let's see what CPU ID says first, though. Yeah, it's picking it up. It knows it's a Westmere. 5660, 32 nanometer. Nope, there's the core. QPI at 3.2. Six cores, 12 threads. Looks okay to me.